This video is sponsored by Amaze. I'll be telling you how you can enter for a chance to win a Tesla Model S and $20,000 later in the video. This is part 6 of the really useful robot project. I've got quite a few updates on this project, but I also wanted to talk about my motivations for developing this robot and the technology that goes into it. I've been building robots for a while, seriously since around 2004, before YouTube even existed. I used to write about them on my blog, and I got pretty obsessed with trying to make robots that walked on two legs. I previously made a video about some of these robots called My Walking Robot History, which I'll put a link to in the video description. And that video also talks about some of my development processes at the time. However, most of these robots, and pretty much all of the other projects in my YouTube channel since I started making regular YouTube videos in about 2013, have been microcontroller based. I didn't even really use a Raspberry Pi or any other single board computer in my projects until about a year ago when I started adding more intelligence to my projects. Microcontrollers are great for controlling hardware precisely, reading wheel encoders or sensors, running time loops accurately locked to the microcontroller clock, and generally making the sorts of projects that I've historically published on YouTube. Although there are now more powerful microcontrollers and things like TinyML, which allows machine learning applications to run on a microcontroller, for any heavier hitting artificial intelligent types of applications, ultimately we need a proper computing platform where we can plug USB webcams and other sensors in to analyse video streams and run software that needs more RAM, disk space and a proper operating system. So that brings us on to building more intelligent machines that can do things like machine vision and perception and autonomous navigation. Some of these projects include training machine learning models to recognise objects like my basic test robot that look for markers to navigate. I also made a pair of Wolverine claws which recognise my facial expression to activate when I pulled an angry face, just like Wolverine's claws activating when he's feeling like it. I made my robot dog, Open Dog V2, recognise my hand gestures so it would walk around as I pointed in various directions, and there are lots of other applications for this type of machine perception. But there's still a lot more we can do than just vision recognition. I spent quite a lot of time learning about ROS, the robot operating system. Although ROS is totally open source, there's almost an overwhelming amount of documentation, tutorials and examples out there, all for various different revisions and versions. So I feel quite good about having got my head around the fundamental concepts of ROS, at least enough to build a robot from scratch which can autonomously navigate using the ROS navigation stack. This reads various sensors and works out where the robot is in the environment. And there's a lot more to ROS than that. One of my initial motivations for building robots was to be better at writing software, and although I'm not a great software developer I feel I can copy and paste well enough to get robots to do what I want. The really useful robot project is intended to be one integrated project which motivates me to learn about building more intelligent machines, so I can use that technology in other projects. There are five videos in the really useful robot project already which you can check out, but the main premise is that it will be a robot that does something useful using machine perception. So far it can navigate using the ROS navigation stack, and it has a robot arm which I can drive around to various positions using an inverse kinematic model, so I can position the end effector in 3D space with XYZ Cartesian coordinates, and send those coordinates using ROS messages. The main computing platform in the robot is an NVIDIA Jetson Xavier NX which has a fair amount of GPU, so we have no problems running NVIDIA's deep learning models on it for machine vision and perception so it can recognise objects. But today we're going to look at the next stage of the robot which involves hacking some software and scripts to tie some of its functionality together. The first thing I need to do is make more use of the Intel RealSense D435i camera I fitted in the robot's head. As well as being an RGB webcam, this camera is also a depth camera which can tell you the distance from the camera to a specific pixel. So the plan is to use the NVIDIA deep learning model that can recognise objects to work out where a specific object is in the field of view, and then use the Intel RealSense API to work out the distance to the object. Then we can use the inverse kinematic model for the arm to drive the end effector to the correct location in physical space to manipulate the object. There are plenty of examples of using NVIDIA deep learning models to recognise objects which I've done many times before, and also some examples of using Intel RealSense D400 series cameras to get the depth data for specific pixel coordinates. I wasn't sure if I could just mash the two together and have it pass the detected pixel coordinates to the depth API, but it appears that you can and it mostly works. I haven't retrained my deep learning model, but the SSD MobileNet model can detect 100 household objects anyway. 
Using the Intel RealSense camera to measure the depth at the centre of the detection seems to work OK. You can see in my terminal I now have X, Y and also Z coordinates for the person detection. The measured distance also appears to be from a plane the camera is mounted on, so I don't get any further away from the camera if I sidestep even though there is a larger diagonal distance between me and the camera. This is very useful because the camera depth coordinates appear to also be Cartesian coordinates, which the inverse kinematics on my arm operate within. I'm going to be detecting some specific objects to start with, but for now we're only going to look for cups. Category 47 of the model already detects cups quite well, so no need to retrain our model yet. You can see that we can detect X, Y and Z coordinates for the cup pretty much wherever I move it. The minimum depth at this resolution is around 200mm which is fine for our purposes. We can check that the depth is roughly correct with a tape measure. It may not always be totally accurate depending on how the cup is oriented, since we're looking at the centre of a detection which is a curved surface at an angle, but it's good enough to allow us to build a robot gripper that can grasp the object. You'll also notice that when I position the cup in the centre of the RGB frame, it's not in the centre of the camera or the centre of the robot. This is because the RGB and depth camera in the Intel RealSense camera itself are separate sensors which are next to each other. I had to do some hacky adjustments in code to get the two to align, which is basically adding on some pixels and rescaling, but it seems to work pretty reliably for now. I haven't bothered with any lens distortion correction either, but we'll see how important that is later. But now it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor. I'm super excited to announce that I've partnered with Amaze to offer you the chance to win a Tesla Model S and $20,000. Taxes and shipping are included for US residents, and even better, every donation benefits two great causes, Give Power and 501c3. All you have to do is go to amaze.com slash James Bruton and enter for your chance to win. The grand prize is really exciting, electric cars of the future, and I, well, could kind of do with a new car, and I'm sure lots of you could too. So enter now before your friends win the prize instead of you, or your enemies. Both Give Power and 501c3 are non-profits who do great work dealing with clean water and clean energy, so it's great to support their cause. So for your chance to win a Tesla Model S and $20,000, go to amaze.com slash James Bruton and enter now. The best part is that every donation supports the great work that Give Power and 501c3 do, so check it out now. That's amaze.com slash James Bruton. Go there, donate, and good luck. In order to drive the end effector to the correct position in 3D space, we need to turn the distance from the camera and the angle from the camera into usable coordinates. This is easy enough to think about because we can use some simple trigonometry to work out the height and horizontal distance of the object from the camera. However, because our field of view gets wider as we move away from the camera, it's hard to determine the exact angle without significant calibration. To make things easier, I decided to add a motor to the rotational camera mount of the robot. Thanks to Robotis for the Dynamics or XC430 W240T servo, you should also check out part 4 of the series to see me using some bigger Dynamics or servos to build the robot's arm. For now I'm using a spare channel from the Command Velocity ROS topic to drive the camera rotation. I'm using the value from the stick on my ROS remote and adding it to the servo position on each loop of the code. This means that I can increment or decrement the position of the camera and it stays where I left it when the stick is in the middle. Now I can move the camera using a ROS topic and message, I can have my image and depth recognition script move the camera using the ROS Python library. The robot's hardware is controlled by a Teensy microcontroller running the ROS serial library for Arduino, so my Arduino code can subscribe and publish multiple ROS topics and messages from anywhere on the network. So now my code moves the camera until the cup is in the middle of the frame vertically and then reads the encoder from the Dynamics or servo, which is also published as a separate ROS topic. This tells us the angle of the camera and therefore the angle of the object from the rotational camera mount fairly accurately. So now we can use the angle in our trigonometry to work out the other two sides of the triangle. I've implemented some extra functions on my ROS remote. I made this remote a while ago and you can find the video in my channel. This remote is built out of a Raspberry Pi and another Arduino which reads the buttons and joysticks and publishes the data as ROS topics. I'm using the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen with a Pi game based script to make buttons on the touchscreen. For now I've coded these to publish a ROS topic which sends a couple of different values. In the first mode the robot looks for the cup, controlling the eye when it comes into view and trying to keep the cup in the middle vertically, and returning the angle of the camera to the script. 
It also continuously records the distance from the Intel RealSense camera and calculates the trigonometry so we can get the height and horizontal distance to the cup from the centre of rotation of the camera. The second mode freezes all these values and tries to move the arm to the position of the cup. The arm was also controlled by spare command velocity topic channels, but now I've implemented a separate vector 3 topic and message for this so we don't get any issues when we run the ROS navigation stack which uses the command velocity topic to drive the motor's wheels. There's no manipulator on the robot yet so it's supposed to just touch the cup with the placeholder wrist plate I fitted. The main issue at the moment is being accurate from left to right. This is because I'm just rescaling the number of horizontal pixels in the RGB image at the centre of the detection and turning that number into millimetres. Of course as objects get closer or further from the camera this number is wrong. We could fix this in the same way we did for the vertical detection, but instead of rotating the camera we could turn the whole robot base until the detection is in the middle of the frame horizontally. The detection itself also gets bigger and smaller as the object gets closer or further away. So this also affects how accurately the robot can touch the edge of the object since the coordinates are for the centre at the moment. I found an article which explains how to use trigonometry based on the field of view of the camera increasing as objects get further away to work out the angle they are from the camera based on their vertical pixel coordinate. Although I really like the way I did it by moving the camera until the object is in the centre, I still need to fix the left to right perception, so I'll probably use this method. Putting the object right in the middle of the camera's field of view does negate the need to correct for lens distortion though. But apparently the RealSense API can actually tell you the real world 3D coordinates of any pixel since it can render a point cloud accurately. I just can't find any great Python examples and I'm not good enough at coding to work it out from the API reference, so I quite like my practical approach to solving the problem. The other main thing that needs to happen, apart from putting a gripper on the robot so it can grasp the object, is coding in some interpolation which I covered in my inverse kinematics demo robot video. So the arm just moves more smoothly to its target over a specified time. This is just some Arduino code though which I'll add in at some point. I started this video by explaining why I was building these robots and about some robots I built in the past. Of course this robot's much more intelligent than those robots and there's lots of technology that's gone into this and I'm quite happy I've managed to hack together lots of off the shelf stuff and open source code using some Python scripts that live in my home folder essentially. Making weekly YouTube videos is quite useful to have learnt about these different bits of technology so I can use them as building blocks essentially in other projects that will happen in the future. It's really useful being able to pinpoint an object in 3D space with a single sensor or make a robot that can navigate autonomously and those things are going to come up in future projects. This project is open source, I'll be publishing all the Canon code and it's all been published to date so check that link out on GitHub in the description to this video. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description to this video as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be involved in all of that discussion. So don't forget to subscribe for more on this and lots of other projects. That's all for now.